Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the viewer showdown again between two medium skill level players. It is an orc versus undead between Xylo and Cool Runnings. Let's see who's going to be taking the grand prize of the winner of the viewer show match today. Cool Runnings is going to be starting with four peons in the mine as is normal with an altar and the new peon is going to be making a burrow. He has elected to go for a full wall off. Well, I'll explain more about wall offs soon. Undead player here, Xylo, has a kind of open base layout. He's gone for an altar crypt, electing to go for the full five acolytes on gold before taking an acolyte off the mine and building a ziggurat near the gold mine that could become an Arubian to protect the mine. Now, what should you know about buildings? There's this funny, quirky little characteristic of every building. It either has a soft center, a soft border or a hard border. It is a bit, little bit weird, but here's how it works. A war mill has a hard border. If you build a war mill against any other building, you cannot pass in between, even with peons. If the war mill were here, you could not go here. It's a hard border against a soft border. If you build two war mills against each other, that's two hard borders next to each other. Cannot go in between. But a burrow has a soft border and a great hole has a soft border. If you put two soft things against each other, what do you get? An opening in between. And this is uh, an altar is also a soft border. And you don't know this. If you don't know this, you don't know this. It's a, you have to know it. So like peons can pass between here, but grunts cannot. Whereas if this burrow had been a war mill, nothing could go in between. So anyway, uh, the reason that people make great hole into burrow into altar opening, uh, the reason that you do this is so that enemy death knights and fiends cannot go through here and go to the back of your base. But peons can still go in and out. And these kind of semi wall offs may be extremely important in Starcraft 1 and Starcraft 2 to stop zirkling run buys. They're not as important in Warcraft, but they still matter. So now if an undead were to want to enter his base, they would have to go through here or here. And later he can work on closing this off as well, if he so choose. Either way, he's opened with a Blademaster Grunt opening, one burrow and a Voodoo Lounge. Very classical opener and found the Slippers of Agility. He's going to tech up the moment he has 190 lumber, which is now. He's a little bit slow actually with it and has gone for a speed scroll and double heal solve. Then the undead has gone for a one creep. He killed, no, he killed a peon, I believe. Yeah, he killed a scout peon, which cool runnings did not replace. And is now going with skeletons and two ghouls to the orc base. This is very unusual. This is a really interesting attack. It is a double ziggurat uh, fast tech. And what he's trying to capitalize on here is a slow second burrow, but it comes at a great cost. He will not be creeping himself. Oh no, he's not gonna cancel the burrow. He's killing the exposed voodoo launch. Now you gotta wonder if it's worth it. The orc has already purchased double heal solve. So killing this, if he even gets it, which is definitely doubtful, is not gonna impede Welcome orcish healing. He's already invested in the future. Zag, zag. So here we go, he's gonna coil his ghoul. So he does get the shop. And the most what this does is to recreate the shop, which is, has a cost. But is that cost as high as the undead not creeping at all? Either way, this is the build that Xylo has chosen to go with, uh, a disruptive build. And I do like it to try to build disruptive, uh, to try and be aggressive early, because the chances that enemies make mistakes when you are being disruptive is so much higher than when you just afk farm both sides so what we have now is that the orc did a double wind walk in order to max damage and try to save himself he's already s spent an extra two healing solves and undead didn't lose anything yet and he's cancelled another solve so while i may not be a huge fan initially of the opener what i can say is that he followed through with additional steps that validated his opening. Cancelling Voodoo Lounge, killing it, does not seem particularly useful if someone has five healing solves. But he's kept skirmishing 
and has basically removed the value of three additional solves because this blade is low he's going to use another one and he already used two so he's trying to create an issue where the orc cannot easily creep anymore or as dota players would call it farm at some point that point isn't yet because he still has charges but it is going to slow down the second hero creeping maybe the first hero creeping and so it's a sacrifice blade is level two he killed one or two ghouls i believe he killed two ghouls actually didn't he yeah he killed two ghouls he's level two and undead is still level one but now the big question is going to be what does undead get out of that advantage what does he get out of lower enemy heroes i think i can remove the apm index yeah what does he get out of lower orcus heroes delayed creeping how is he going to use the tech advantage that he's built up to win the game that's what we're gonna have to wait and see so he's not reproducing any extra ghouls he made five lost two has three three is a good amount to have on lumber slaughterhouse lich fiend tier three when he gets his lich out he's gonna be able to get orb of corruption soon soon after oh can he steal this can he steal this with the coil coil does 100 damage blade master with windwalk right click does about 70 80 damage undead is going to be able to steal this this is huge i want to say this was a key moment of the game this mattered more than almost anything whether he found this and whether he stops this he needs to tp instantly if he wants to save the fiend unless he goes frost armor and coil he will still lose it but it will take a while but he needs to start hitting things back i would recommend hitting the shadow hunter because that shadow hunter is gonna hex over and over again he just needs to hit the shadow and he's hitting it now he loses the fiend uh an early frost armor on other things would help dk is getting attacked frost armor does 50 percent movement slow and attack slow no frost armor yet on the fiend he is hurting the grunts so that's nice there was a shop so there are more healing selves on the shadow in our last viewer show match orc had the lead this one looks very good for the orc as well he kills a fiend mana pot was used by undead and undead is low and undead killed nothing the units are hurt orc is gonna pull back he spends heal solves he spent the clarity which got instantly cancelled and there's raiders coming out here and if i look at this build layout from orc this setup this totally looks like it intends to take a tier 2 expansion and with the money that he has now that expansion is very late he started creeping this first this is a hotly contested camp he's not going to clear his gold mine yet he's just fighting and instead of expansion i don't know if this is an adaptation or if this is uh what he always intended to go for but he's gone with tier three so it's a heavy focus on tier two with grunts and raiders and now creeping another contestable camp and he is going to kill another fiend i think coil Welcome should be available fiend lives six months Yo. statue is here and with statue i think it turns the tide where undead actually has the superior strength blade is also still very low he sees the blade coming chose not to finish the ogre yet there's a greater mana pot that's super useful for the undead he needs it xylo needs to focus fire orcish units he's still aggroing creeps tier three is here but no orb of corruption yet oh there we go he's got orb of corruption now and mana pot his dk somehow is still level one but at this point there can be no doubt the undead army is stronger than the orcish army at this phase He's leveraging statue healing, which is like quote unquote free healing. There's no such thing for orc. Everything has to be paid for via heal solves and heal scrolls. He's got his orb. He now has lich level two. This feels like a perfect time to pick up a, a third hero from the tavern and push the orc base. Pre tier three, he's hurt orc multiple times without major kills. So that slows down the orc, but hasn't netted him any XP yet. But he falls all the way back to his own side of the map, takes a small camp. Welcome to the Grubsters. Cash money Normally at months. this point, you want to either push the orc base or you want to take a big camp. Your expo, their expo, red spot, red spot, or one of the fountain spots. 
but he, he pulls back to his base. There's a third statue. He's got his, uh, he's got a sixth acolyte for some reason. I don't know why. Because he has an acolyte here that was scouting. And now he has a seventh acolyte. Burrow, destroyer upgrade. Another ziggurat finish, so he now has money for a third hero. He sends the acolyte to the tavern and he starts a temple. So it's a very um, gradual pace of the game by Zylo. He does not feel like he's under any time pressure. And we know that's true because there is no expansion. We've got a Tarn Chieftain coming out. Grubsters. Just her average bros 13 months. Amazing content and attitude as usual. Love the wholesome streams. Thank you very much. Oh, there we see our first sight of the Claws of Attack plus eight. The newly patched Claws. Lich gets level three. Two Kodos by uh, Orc is uh, not unusual. It offers a little bit of anti-air and anti-unarmored, like Banshees. Uh, they can eat fiends. They buff damage and you've got redundancy so that you can uh, lose it and still have that aura, the war drums, 10% bonus damage, 20% with the upgrade. But they are a slow unit. That Forge cast does not creep as fast as other units. Generally, when you double Kodo, you want to fight early so that you can devour units, digest them, and then devour again. We are now looking at an anti-timing for Orc. Cool Runnings is at 46 pop, which is sub max. He has not prepared for a 60 pop boom because he doesn't have the bonus burrow yet. He's not even maxing out units right now on the, the no upkeep. He could make a third Kodo, a Wind Rider. He could go double Berserkers. I'll just mute Welcome this for a bit and read it later. Thank you so much, Tans Klaue. Whereas Undead, he's on the warpath. No third hero as of right now, but he is coming in with Banshees. Now, Banshees are a really good choice against Blade. Curse with the mischance can be extremely useful. And as Orc sees that Undead is attacking, he runs back from the would-be camp that he would have started. And meanwhile, sneakily, Xylo does this. I like Xylo's game pace. I thought that his early game was uh, tough to defend, tough to transition out of. But he plays confidently into a one base orc, just developing his tech route with Banshees. I want to see the value of that curse. Lich goes in very far forward, but he's got Invil, he's got Coil, he's going to be fine. He's using it as a tank. He's going to be able to Invil, no problem. And now some hero focus on the blade master another coil on the lich now pulling it back as invil is about to wane that's a big war down by cool runnings he goes for the lich again there's another coil for sure instead of coiling he chokes and he tps out he loses his lich and he kills not much at all the strategy is there but the micro not quite i can tell you from experience that undead could have killed a couple of units survived with everything and then TP out. So cool runnings, focused the Lich, got what he wanted, focused it again after Invul passed and is now starting to creep something rather large. The Ogre Lord, what's he gonna get? Brilliance Aura? Endurance? Command Aura? Is it gonna be uh, Klaus plus 12? I'm curious to see what it's gonna be. Maybe a plus five, five stats item? Ogre Lord runs away and that means there might be another Shockwave. That's actually going to be painful. Meanwhile, the TC sets up to buy a tiny great hole. There's another shockwave. Hurts his units quite a bit. And if he doesn't kill it fast, there'll be another shockwave. There we go. That's a lot of damage on the orc. He's going to need to heal up at the fountain, which could leave him weak. And he gets a very unlucky war drums aura, which gives the war drums aura, which is the same thing Kodos offered. So this does nothing. It's just money. Meanwhile, Xylo creeping very, very small and timidly. His Lich is dead. He's got uh, 51 population. He's selling items while on 51 pop, which actually incurs a tax. Even items that you sell uh, don't give as much money when you're on 51 pop. So that's a very bad pop count to be at, 51. You get minimum money for maximum advantage. No. Minimum money for minimum advantage. Grunt lost to creeps. 
Ring of the Arc Magi is found, which is a new item. A new official patch item. Plus 333. Three, three. It's like one and a half circlet. Seems a bit of a letdown from a camp this big, but uh, there we go. Expo's up. He is mining with 10 acolytes with 70% efficiency because of the 51 pop low upkeep. That means he's earning 40% more than someone on one base no upkeep. This is why expansions are not as common in uh, Warcraft as in Starcraft because of the upkeep. Now, Cool Runnings is actually earning the same thing. 14 gold per second. 7 per second here and 7 per second here. Actually, no, strike that. He's only got 4 peons in his gold mine at home. So Xylo is getting a little bit richer, but he's still at 51 pop. He's going all in against the expansion. Well, not all in. He's got a TP. But he leaves the destroyer, which actually ironically takes care of his population issue just as he starts making more units. The, the play here is going to be kill all the peons and TP out. Now would be a good time to TP before he gets in too deep. But he's taking the fight. He's taking the fight. He has killed a raider and a grunt. Lost nothing yet. War stop is going to come in. Lich is getting focused. Does have the invul. Uh, Orc actually has very little DPS here. Are you guys seeing this? No. Oh. Because the curse. But uh, the Kodos both eat a fiend. And a Banshee got critical struck. There's a war stomp. Xylo is fighting this crazy impossible fight. He does not need to fight. He should have gone out of here a long time ago because he reduced the peon count to one. And there's only four here. So right now, for all intents and purposes, Cool Runnings is mining on one base. And if you can put someone on one base mining and you're on two base mining, and you TP out, and you meet again a minute or two later, you're gonna have a bigger army relatively than theirs. Whereas if you hurt someone's economy and immediately take a follow-up fight, doesn't matter how it goes, let's say you trade even, you're not making use of their future deprived income yet. Make sense? Third hero is very needed here for Xylo. Pitlord would really fit his strat. Together with Banshee Curse and Frost Armor, he will have three ways of enemy damage mitigation, which is really useful against Blade. He needs to focus fire these Kodos. These Kodos have no armor. They just devour the Fiend. Lich is running aw away the far side. And uh, while he's being pressured, no unit production right now because he's stressed. Big Bad Blade is coming for you. Hide behind your towers. Smart. Lich. Is safe. Unholy Frenzy. Oh my god. He's going Banshees and Necros. Unholy Frenzy. Let's go. This guy is a special scientist undead player. His Lich is going to do a lot of damage. But does he have the survivability to output that damage? Because he's not using his money enough to produce units. That's two grunts down. There are towers here, they're helping a lot. But remember, this is kind of a death trap. He can't get out. Well, he has TP. Okay, he can't get out. DK is gonna die. He needs to devour the Hex on DK if it's gonna come. Or Invil, right now, and he does. He's focusing the Blade. Blade has Invil as well, and the Heal Scroll. I don't think he has enough damage to get out of this one. Xylo. Could get hexed on the DK if he does, and Blade is next to him, he could die. Unless he devours the hex, he's gonna TP out. These towers should be redirected onto the Windrider. They're all attacking Tarn Chieftain, which is a big tank. Now he's gonna lose his acolytes. Cool runnings, not yet uh, putting all his peons to work again. Four in the mine here, three in the mine here. Kind of StarCraft 1 Zerg style. Now the towers are retargeting into the Windrider. That rider goes down. Xylo on his last legs. Banshee, Abomination, and Fiends. A lot of different units. He made one Necro just for Frenzy. Didn't remake it, so now he's making Banshees. One Abom. A lot of different units, but in my mind, he could just make only Fiends and Banshees. Only focus the TC. And then just, just right-click TC with everything. Curse a bunch of things. And I keep saving whatever unit is getting attacked. If you do that, 
There will be no war stomps. There will be no TC. If Kodos step up, you focus them. Otherwise, you just focus TC. Don't focus Blade, has too much armor. Just focus TC. If you do that, you can win the fight. But now, where's his destroyer? Okay, he removes the hex. Lich getting attacked. Does have invil. I think it's too late. He knows he's against two bases. He tries to coil the blade, but the blade wind walks. Right clicks him. DK goes down. Cool runnings. Cool runnings coming out clutch here. And defeats Xylo with his special double caster. Well, actually quad caster, right? Destroyer, statue, necro, and banshee strategy. Some pretty cool moves by both. But our orc wins again. So does that prove it? At low level, medium, does orc greater than undead? Is it Imba? Or will the next show match have an undead winner? If you want to see more, sub to the grub and you'll find out. Hope you enjoyed. See ya.